everyone and uh, my name is Rufus Kamau, a market analyst at FX Pesa. And today we'll be focusing on cryptocurrencies one on one. So it's more or less of a beginner session. Apologies. So it's a beginner session uh, focusing on uh, cryptocurrencies. So we'll be, first of all, trying to understand what cryptocurrencies are, uh, what are the opportunities in crypto. Uh, we'll be looking at Bitcoin, what is Bitcoin and what, it, what makes it uh, different from other cryptocurrencies. Uh, we will also be focusing on Ethereum and uh, try to understand uh, what makes Ethereum different from other cryptocurrencies, how you can uh, participate in the cryptocurrency world, the opportunities involved, and also how you can trade CFD cryptocurrencies on the FX Pesa platform. So to answer the very question, first question we have here, uh, what's up, what is the lesson about? I think uh, that question is uh, well answered. So I'll be focusing on a couple of things. Uh, one, we want to make this as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions around crypto, then feel free to raise those questions and I'll be responding to those questions right away. So at the same time, um, if um, there's uh, any questions that come up uh, throughout the presentation, uh, feel uh, welcome to raise the questions. So before I make uh, further progress, I'd like to begin by a mic test. So if you can hear me clearly, kind of type hi on the live chat, and uh, these will confirm that everything is working just fine. So, hi, John. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your response. Uh, I'm getting responses on Twitter and also from uh, Zoom. So, forgive me when I have to like waste a couple of seconds moving from one platform to the other, trying to check out the responses. So, the very first question, uh, what are cryptocurrencies? So, cryptocurrencies are uh, basically uh, currency, uh, digital currencies that are based on a blockchain. So I'll be looking for a much finer definition and uh, share these with you. So just a quick minute here. Just want to make sure that you guys have the best resources possible. So in uh, simple terms, when you talk about a cryptocurrency, uh, it's basically a decentralized dig digital money that's based on a blockchain technology. So you may be familiar with the most popular versions such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, but there are more than 19,000 different cryptocurrencies in circulation in the world today. So these cryptocurrencies will serve different roles. Uh, sometimes they are used that, as tokens, uh, to enter certain ecosystems, uh, sometimes to buy digital collectibles. Uh, sometimes cryptocurrencies are used as cash, uh, such as uh, in the case of Bitcoin. Um, they are used as a framework to access smart contra contracts, uh, For it, in this case, uh, for instance, with uh, Ethereum and so on. So there are so many different classifications of uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, we'll be looking at those as we proceed uh, with the presentation today. And once we understand these concepts, then we'll uh, try and focus on where the opportunities lie. So as mentioned, all cryptocurrencies are based on one underlying technology. And this technology is called uh, blockchain. So I see questions are beginning to stream in, and uh, this is good. So a blockchain is basically an open distributed ledger of the, the records, transactions in code. So when uh, you focus on a blockchain, uh, it's something that is not very new. It's something that uh, has been in ex existence uh, for quite a period of time. Uh, transactions are recorded in one block. That one block is uh, 
connected to the next block and the next block and so on. So this way, all the transactions are in one chain of blocks, uh, basically described as a blockchain. So if these transactions can be classified as financial, then it becomes uh, easy to make these uh, financial records uh, easily accessible, transparent, and uh, this is a hot, uh, one of the features that makes blockchain so appealing to cryptocurrency users. So in practice, it's like a checkbook that's distributed across countries' computers across the world. So transactions are recorded in blocks that are then linked together on a chain of previous cryptocurrency transactions. So imagine a book where you write down everything you spend on each day. Um, so if you spend, let's say, uh, on a couple of transactions and then you record that in a book, then you encrypt that data and then use that key to open the next book. So this way you have uh, several uh, chains of books where you can always uh, go back and uh, check all the transactions since day one. So the same case applies to cryptocurrencies. For instance, if you check on Bitcoin, you can uh, be able to go to the chain and query on uh, search for the very fast Bitcoin transaction. So all the transactions are recorded in the same chain and this helps with the transparency and at the same time removes the need for an intermediary. So using this technology, a lot of our cryptocurrencies have been built. Very fast uh, cryptocurrencies to be built on this technology is called Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is uh, very simple. Uh, it uses the peer-to-peer -peer technology to operate with uh, no central authority or banks. Uh, managing transactions and issuing of Bitcoin is carried out correctively by the network. So Bitcoin is open source, meaning that uh, you can find its code, you can check out every bit of its code. It's Design is public and nobody owns or controls Bitcoin and everyone can take part. So through many of its uh, unique properties, Bitcoin allows existing uses that could not be covered by any previous payment system. So let's try and uh, go deeper and try to understand uh, why we are doing this. So there is uh, also a question here, what is Bitcoin? Is it a currency uh, that is a digital currency? Is it a store value? Or what is it? So good, good question. Uh, thank you, Apollo. So yes, it's a digital currency. Uh, it's used for two things. Uh, one, to store value, and two, to transfer value. So transfer value is basically to make payments. Uh, you're able to send peer to peer. So from one person to another person, regardless of geographical location, without the need of a third party. So let's do a very simple uh, illustration. If you want to send some money from uh, uh, yourself to another person, let's say in the US, uh, you'd have to go to your local bank, deposit your Kenya shillings to the local bank. Uh, then the local bank makes a a transaction to a foreign bank in the US. And then the US bank uh, releases an equivalent amount of money in dollars to the recipient on the other side. So in this case, these are two intermediaries. And of course, the two banks, we also use an intermediary. So there will probably be one, two, or three uh, middlemen between your transaction, um, where these each of these intermediaries will be charging something. Uh, they'll be spending some seconds uh, on that transaction, and that makes uh, the payment system very expensive, has a lot of friction uh, compared to Bitcoin, where you can send directly without having to trust uh, that party. So Bitcoin allows permissionless way of sending and receiving currencies uh, from one person to another or from one party to another. So the only thing you need is a mobile, uh, sorry, internet con connected device. This can be a mobile phone, can be a laptop or even a tablet. As long as you have that, uh, you can always create a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin address, send and uh, receive Bitcoins. So it makes it uh, very simple compared to the traditional financial system. So to put this in perspective, uh, when I started trading in the financial markets, that is Forex trading, uh, that was back in 2013, we did not have local brokers. Uh, there were no brokers regulated in Kenya, so you'd have to trade with a foreign broker. So if you're trading with a broker, let's say in the UK, Cyprus, US, then you'd have to, let's say, do a wire transfer. And a wire transfer transaction take three to five working days. So in order for me to start trading on my account, 
uh, the deposit process will take at a minimum of three days. So if you deposit on Monday, you probably get your deposit reflecti reflecting on your account on Friday. So after you trade for a period of time, let's say for a month, you have made some profits and you want to withdraw that money, then it will take another three to five days. And sometimes transactions will get lost in the way. Now you have to go going back and forth. You go to your commercial bank, uh, they give you a statement, they tell you uh, they have not received the funds. Uh, from the other side, you have withdrawn, they tell you they have already sent the funds. And it was quite a hectic uh, uh, journey trying to get your money uh, from a foreign broker to your, let's say, MPESA account in Kenya. So Bitcoin solves this, and uh, not just Bitcoin, but other cryptocurrencies. So you're able to send peer-to-peer -peer without having uh, to trust any intermediaries. So I see uh, someone is raising a hand. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll allow you to raise the question. Uh, hello, George. Uh, can you raise your question? Hello. All right. I'm assuming there's no question. All right. If there's no question, then we progress. So when you raise your hand, I am assuming that you want to raise a question. So in that case, I allow you to raise the question uh, verbally. So uh, make no mistake. So now that we understand uh, what cryptocurrencies are and uh, how you can uh, trade them, uh, sorry, uh, and what they are based on, now let's go ahead and uh, look at a couple of uh, cryptocurrencies available uh, in the market and uh, how they are classified. So I'll be using a very common website. Uh, it's called CoinMarketCap. So I'll try and share the link. So there is the link on the live chat. Hopefully I can be able to share to YouTube too. Uh, getting some good responses. So there's the website, the link to the website, uh, coinmarketcap.com. So the website is uh, owned by Binance. Uh, it basically shows you the ranking of cryptocurrencies. So clearly uh, from this menu, you can see that the number one cryptocurrency in the world is Bitcoin. And the current price is 19,168.85. The change in price in the last one hour is 0.41%. The last 24 hours is 0.60% uh, in the negative side. And the last seven days is down 4.70%. So the total market capitalization of Bitcoin, this is all the Bitcoins available in the market multiplied by this price, uh, is equivalent to $367.6 million. So the amount of volume of Bitcoin traded in the last 24 hours is equivalent to $53 billion. And the total circulating supply of Bitcoins is 19,157,643. And this is about 91.23%. So when you talk about circulating supply, this is uh, all the Bitcoins available in the market. Uh, the amount of coins that are circulating in the market that are in the public hands. It is analogous to the following uh, to the flowing shares in the stock market. So uh, we know that uh, the maximum number of bitcoins that will ever be there is 21 million. 91.23% uh, uh, already in existence. So bitcoin miners will be looking to take advantage of uh, the remaining 8.7 something uh, percent uh, of the bitcoin supply, and this will take a really long time. 
uh, the mining process uh, will take between now and the year 2140. So in between that period, we will be looking to mine the remaining Bitcoins, and this is roughly around uh, 1 million Bitcoins. So you can see it's uh, up already above 19 million. We are looking, looking at 21 million, so uh, slightly below 2 million Bitcoins. So the second cryptocurrency is Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum is a little bit different, uh, mainly because it supports what we call smart contracts. So smart contracts allow people to uh, make agreements online without having to trust a third intermediary. So they are built on top of the Ethereum layer. So you can have all types, all kinds of uh, smart contracts built on Ethereum. And uh, this will allow you to transact with a second or a third person without have, having to trust anyone else in between. So for instance, if I was to have a financial agreement with you, uh, that uh, let's say I'm going to do something and then you're going to pay me this amount, then we generally need a third party. Perhaps we take that contract to a lawyer so that if uh, you don't uh, do whatever we agreed, then the lawyer will take it forward and make sure that that is done. So in that case, the, both, of her, both of us have to trust someone. However, with smart contracts, they are automatically executed, so there is no need for a third party. So if we agree on a particular contract and you sign and I sign on my side, then there's uh, no reason to trust any other person. The contract is executed automatically. So it makes it possible to do out of uh, uh, transactions and uh, activities online without having to trust a third party. So this is uh, something that is not present on the Bitcoin blockchain. So it makes it a unique type of a blockchain that developers find useful when they are building applications uh, that we refer to as decentralized applications. And these applications are used to a large number of staff, uh, some of which we'll be covering today. So the third largest cryptocurrency is called Tether or USDT. So it's basically a stable coin. So the stable coin uh, is basically mirrors the value of the dollar. So I want you to think about it this way. So when you talk about Tether, uh, it's basically an organization behind this particular uh, coin. So basically it takes dollars and then invest uh, these dollars in the market for real assets. So when uh, uh, it sells its coins uh, for dollars, remember it's one for one. So if Tether sells 1 million coins, it gets $1 million. And then it keeps these physical dollars, it can invest in uh, bonds, it can keep cash among other uses. And uh, this way, when you have one tether online, uh, that one tether is backed by an actual dollar or an actual asset that is worth $1 in the market. So it helps uh, when, when it comes to digital transactions. So you're able to send and receive dollars online uh, without having to use the physical cash or having to trust the intermediaries. And that is uh, the traditional financial institutions, uh, such as banks and the payment service providers, uh, such as PayPal, uh, MasterCard, Visa, and so on. So in this case, when you have Tether, you can send and receive dollars around the world without having to trust a third party. And this make it, makes it uh, very easy to do online transactions. So we also have another type of uh, uh, stable coin. And uh, this is a USD coin. It's based on a different chain, uh, also back to one to one to the dollar. And then we have another uh, similar uh, platform with Ethereum. So as we mentioned, Ethereum is a layer one protocol uh, that basically uh, allows uh, people to build smart contracts. So uh, the founder of uh, Binance, uh, you know, the biggest uh, cryptocurrency exchange in the world, uh, it's headed by CZ. Uh, the full name is Chan Peng Zhao. Uh, he was uh, among the very first people to study Bitcoin and uh, the blockchain and how you can uh, implement it at a wider scale. So he worked with Ethereum for a while and he saw some weaknesses, especially when it comes to transaction costs. So he broke out of Ethereum and built his own uh, chain called Binance Chain. So it operates similar to Ethereum, but when it comes to transaction costs, they are much lower compared to when you are on Ethereum network. So it also supports uh, smart contracts. So there's uh, a lot of applications built on top of Binance chain. 
And uh, these applications are quite varied. So we'll be looking at some of them as we proceed with the presentation today. So it's currently valued at $269.40. And uh, if you look at the security in supply is uh, 161 million uh, BNB. And the total market capitalization is uh, $43 billion. Uh, then we have Ripple, uh, also another layer one chain. Uh, this one was uh, specifically designed to serve as a transaction layer to help people transfer value from one location to another. So just like Bitcoin, uh, though it has its own uh, differences uh, that you're going to learn further as uh, you get into the world of cryptocurrencies. So we have Binance USD. Binance USD uh, is basically the stable coin that is used on the BNB ecosystem. So if you're on Ethereum ecosystem, you use USDT. If you're on uh, Binance, then you use Binance uh, USD. So Cardano, another layer one that supports both uh, smart contracts. Solana, another layer one that supports uh, smart contracts. Uh, Dogecoin, among the earliest uh, cryptocurrencies, was a clear copy of uh, Bitcoin. So uh, gained transaction uh, traction in the world as a result of a lot of memes. So it was created based on a meme, and then it grew in terms of uh, grew in terms of uh, reality. Right now, as we speak, it's worth seven point eight. Uh, billion dollars. So one coin is going to add uh, about five cents, 0 0.05 dollars. So there's more Polkadot uh, right here. We have Dai, uh, we have Polygon, Matic, Shiba Inu, uh, Tron, Avalanche, Rap Bitcoin, uh, Unus, uh, SEDLL, uh, we have Uniswap, Cosmos, Ethereum Classic, uh, Lite Litecoin, Chainlink, FTX token, and so on. So all these uh, cryptocurrencies can be grouped into several classifications. Uh, one, uh, we have what we call DeFi. So DeFi uh, is basically applications that are built on layer one. So they are basically layer two applications that allow you to practice what we call decentralized finance. So decentralized finance uh, is basically doing uh, the same, same services that are offered by traditional financial systems. But then you do them on the blockchain. So for instance, if you go and stake your cash in a commercial bank, after a period of time, you will get an annual pay payout. So if it's a fixed deposit, uh, you might get two, three, four, five, six, seven percent uh, after a period of time, keeping your money in there. So you're also able to stake your money with uh, some of these, these exchanges and protocols. And um, in this case, you do that using a decentralized finance application. So an example would be, let's say, Avalanche. Uh, you deposit your money with the uh, your Avalanche ecosystem, then you get an annual payout. So it's a similar service uh, such as uh, with the traditional finance, only that in this case, you don't have to trust anyone. You don't have to ask permission from anyone. And it makes it uh, very easy for you as a user. So there's a wrap Bitcoin, uh, we have Uniswap, which is uh, basically a uh, DX, or what you call a decentralized exchange. Uh, we have Chainlink, Terra Classic, Tezos, Atita Network, Av, uh, The Graph, uh, Neutrino, Maker, and also PancakeSwap. Uh, for PancakeSwap, I think uh, it's the biggest uh, decentralized exchange on the Binance chain, uh, where you're able to swap uh, one token for another. So there's uh, different tokens operating on top of Binance, and if you want to swap from one token to another, then you use the, this decentralized exchange where you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies uh, pseudonymously uh, without having to trust in a other third, third party. So besides uh, the DeFi, uh, we have what we call NFTs. So NFTs are a new kind uh, way of uh, owning digital assets. And uh, this uh, got a lot of traction during the last two years, especially during the COVID-19 period. So with NFTs, which is short for non-farm payroll, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, apologies, it's not non-farm payrolls, uh, it's non-fungible tokens. So non-fungible tokens basically uh, implies the immutable records. Uh, so if, uh, let's say, uh, there's a digital asset, uh, such as uh, this could be a photo, uh, it could be a video, an audio, or, or an address. Uh, it can be recorded on a blockchain that you are the sole owner of that particular asset. So regardless of where you find that asset on the internet, you will have the title deed 
showing that you uh, prove that you are the one who owns that particular asset. So with this technology, you are able to own a lot of things. Uh, for instance, uh, in the traditional uh, world, uh, where we, let's say, use the domains, uh, we all know domains. Uh, you can always uh, have a domain for your business or for yourself. I could have rufuscomeout.com, uh, .org, and so on. So those domains, uh, we normally pay subscriptions because there are companies that actually host uh, these domains and provide those services. So uh, you pay an annual subscription to own that domain. However, with an NFT domain, basically by an NFT, uh, let's say in your name or the name of your business, uh, you own that permanently without having to subscribe because it's hosted on the chain. So if uh, the NFT is, uh, let's say, hosted on an Ethereum network, then it will be yours forever. It will be your address, so no need to renew. Allows you that kind of uh, digital ownership of that particular address. So there's more to NFTs. There's uh, images, there's videos, and so on. So at some point, we'll even have apps uh, classified as NFTs. So uh, where to get crypto? Uh, that, that's a good question. I'll also be answer, answering that. So allow me, as we proceed, to from time in time to check on uh, the guys who are watching this on YouTube and try to respond to these. So hello, Kaigua, and uh, welcome to the session. Sorry. Just a moment. All right, so as you can see, there's uh, so many uh, classifications when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Uh, there's metaverse. Uh, we all know uh, what the metaverse is. Uh, it's a digital ecosystem, a virtual world, where you can walk, uh, you can build, uh, you can uh, hold conferences, you can hold meetings, uh, you can do sports, you can do gaming and all that kind of stuff in this virtual world where you need a special kind of device. Um, in the simplest way you can access the metaverse is using your computer or mobile phone, but the, to get a better experience, you have to use a VR device or a virtual reality device. So from there, you can access and uh, buy sell services on the metaverse. And it has become quite a big, 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 big thing, especially after Facebook decided to go full scale in the metaverse industry. So. There's a lot of uh, coins uh, that are building in the metaverse. Uh, some of the big, big names in the metaverse uh, right now is uh, ApeCoin. Uh, ApeCoin is not as big, uh, though the market cap uh, here is clear, uh, $1.8 billion. I think the central land is uh, one of the biggest in the ecosystem, $1.3 billion valuation. Sandbox, very big. A lot of games uh, have been built on the Sandbox ecosystem. I love Twitter network. Then we have Adzi Infinity, uh, the biggest gaming platform uh, in the metaverse, worth over $1 billion. Uh, we have Engine Coin, Stacks, Zilliqa, Ontology Works, uh, Play, Dia, uh, Sushi Swap, and so on. So, uh, besides metaverse, uh, we have Polkadot. So, Polkadot is a layer one chain, just like Ethereum. So, there's a lot of uh, coins uh, or tokens that have been built on top of Polkadot. Uh, we have the ones built on BNB, we have the ones built on Solana, uh, the ones built on Avalanche, and also uh, the ones built on Ethereum. 
So that's one of the ways to try and classify these coins and uh, try to understand them based on how they are classified. So if you're looking to buy cryptocurrencies, there's various exchanges that are available uh, for use to buy cryptocurrencies. Uh, one of them is uh, Binance. I believe Binance is uh, one of the biggest uh, in the world. Uh, second, uh, you can also buy cryptocurrencies uh, from Coinbase. Uh, it's a big, big exchange that is uh, regulated in the US. Uh, you can also buy from uh, FTX, also a big, big uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, there's crypto.com, uh, also a big, big exchange, and uh, you can use some of those to buy you know, very fast cryptocurrencies. So, still checking on the questions. Um, hello, why is there a large sponsorship or in simple terms, a scam in cryptocurrency, especially in Kenya? Uh, thank you, Rachel. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, there's a couple of factors that have contributed to this. So in the cryptocurrency world, I mentioned there's uh, over 19,000 coins. And uh, a majority of them, I would say over 90%, are uh, basically scams. And uh, there's no reason to look into them. I uh, just avoid them uh, completely. Uh, because uh, you probably lose your money in these cryptocurrencies. So uh, the main reason that this happens is uh, something that I've actually written about is that one, uh, they are completely uh, decentralized. So any developer from any part of the world is able to join an ecosystem. Let's say it can be Solana, uh, it can be Binance Chain, it can be uh, Ethereum. Uh, build an application, launch tokens, and then sell tokens for value, let's say for dollars, for Bitcoin, or for stablecoins. And uh, once they sell those tokens in the product, if the product is not uh, designed to be productive, then you lose your money. So by being that free, it's open to abuse, uh, people are able to build scams on their blockchains and then sell to people, and then people end up losing money. So that's why it's very important that you go through these financial literacy lessons, understand what you are doing before you decide to commit your money in any cryptocurrency project. So that's one thing, one of the reasons why uh, there are so many scams. So the other one uh, is because of the frenzy. There's a lot of frenzy happening around the cryptocurrency industry. Uh, meme coins will just create a coin. Uh, you don't need any coding skills. There's a ready templates where you can just uh, within a couple of minutes, create a cryptocurrency, give it a name, and then you start selling those tokens. So unless you know what you're doing or what you're buying into, you should probably stay off the cryptocurrency world. So for instance, um, when uh, let's say you want to buy into shares, you want to buy the shares of a company, uh, you want to know what the company does, uh, you want to know the financial position of the company, uh, the distribution of the shares in the company, how many people are there, how many people own the shares, uh, what kind of organizations own the shares of that company. At the same time, you want to know uh, how much the company is making, uh, what value it's creating, what is the potential for the company to create uh, value in the near future. So you want to own a company that has a good track record of making money and uh, that gives you value over time. So when you understand these concepts, then you can easily apply the same concepts in crypto world. So you want to know the distribution of ownership in a cryptocurrency project. You want to know the financial position of the company. You want to know the leadership, who is behind this particular company. And at the same time, you want to know what value is being created by this cryptocurrency project. If you cannot answer those questions, then there's no need to invest in the cryptocurrency world. But then these are very promising projects that are very transparent. Uh, for instance, with Bitcoin, there's nobody behind it. So if you decide to invest in Bitcoin, uh, then uh, you should know there's no uh, single person group or company behind Bitcoin. Uh, the person who created uh, Bitcoin did so anonymously and disappeared, has never transacted uh, since 2009. So makes it a very open space where you can query all transactions and uh, you can tell the direction that the market is taking just by analyzing the demand and supply in the market. So besides uh, Bitcoin, there's uh, Ethereum. Uh, we know that uh, there is uh, the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, uh, basically, uh, it's a big, big organization. 
uh, has uh, some level of influence in the chain, uh, can make some uh, proposals to changes in the chain, but at the same time, it has a lot of investments, uh, a lot of interest uh, within the Ethereum ecosystem. So when you think about it, think, think of it as a big, big organization uh, where there's a couple of guys who have a, a lot of ownership in the ecosystem. Then there's the rest of the owners, there's the builders or the developers, and all of them are aiming to push the project forward. So when you understand that, then you can uh, compare the interest, look at the value being created on the platform. And once you understand the value being created on the platform, then you can make a more informed decision on whether to invest or trade on the Ethereum ecosystem. So uh, I'm seeing some good, good questions uh, as we proceed. So you mentioned that a transaction is between two people without a third party. However, we have heard of several cases of fraud. How and why is this? I think I've already explained that. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, which wallets do you recommend in holding your coins? Uh, what are the factors affecting the current bearish move in cryptocurrency? Uh, good, good questions, uh, Vincent, thank you. So uh, which wallets do you recommend in holding your coins? Um, there are so many wallets out there that you can use to hold your coins. Um, you want to have a wallet that is non-custodial. So when you talk about wallets in cryptocurrencies, uh, you don't want to have a wallet where the keys are owned by the organization providing the wallet. So you want to have a wallet where you own the keys and the keys are basically the crypto cryptographic code that you use to sign your transactions. So if you want to send some Bitcoin uh, to a particular person, then you basically uh, sign those uh, transactions using the code. So hello, Joshua, and welcome to the session. Hello. Can, Hello. can you hear me, bro? Yes, I can hear you, but there's some level of echo in your sound. Okay, I think it's because... Uh, I think you have two devices logged in or something. Okay, I think it was because I connected both my laptop and my phone. Yes, uh, now it's clear. So, hello, everyone. Uh, Joshua is a big, big trader uh, from... Uh, Nigeria is uh, very experienced in uh, cryptocurrency trading. So I invited him specifically to this session to share his insights and uh, how you can trade and understand these cryptocurrencies before you decide to commit your money in the opportunities uh, available. So I have a couple of questions for you, uh, Joshua. Uh, but first, uh, kindly introduce yourself. All right. I want to thank you, first of all, for the opportunity to speak in your webinar, brother. So I appreciate uh, bringing me live on this session. And it's nice to, I want to say hello to the audience as well. Yeah, they can't respond, but hello, everybody. Uh, it feels good to be on here with everyone. I'm trying to see if there's a way of like turning my camera on so they can see my face. I'm not really used to this Zoom stuff. Okay. Okay, so I'm a trader. I trade Forex. I also trade crypto, but uh, I'm actually playing the crypto markets big time, more than Forex. So, yeah. I'm open to your questions, brother. Uh, I, I hope to do justice to whatever you ask. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So how long have you been trading uh, crypto? Uh, I've been trading for the past uh, crypto four years now. I started with Forex, but then I, I found more footing in crypto. Awesome, awesome. So um, we have a lot of beginners in the house uh, who are looking to start trading crypto. So with uh, FX Pesa, which is a regulated broker in Kenya, uh, we have what we call CFD crypto or contracts for difference, where you are able to trade currencies without having to own them. So you don't have to own a wallet, you don't have to deposit crypto, or withdraw crypto, just de uh, deposit the normal currency that you use, just, just like in Forex, and then you speculate on the 
value of crypto against the US dollar. So what advice would you give to a beginner trader who is looking to venture into, uh, into crypto or, or a forex trader who is looking to try out crypto? Okay, so the first advice I would give to someone who wants to trade crypto is that uh, the markets are volatile, okay? And then the second one is that you want to focus on long-term. Long-term is the real deal. I've been speaking lately with a lot of big-time players in the crypto market. So long-term is the big deal. And then the third one is that you need mentorship. For every water you want to swim in, you need to find someone who's gone through those waters and they've come out successfully. So I believe that FX Pesa uh, with uh, Rufus Kamau is you are in great hands. Okay, so uh, my brother's gonna do justice to that, and they're gonna put you through. So you need mentorship, you need to think long term, and you need to know that the market is volatile. Therefore, you want to focus on your risk management. Our strategies. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, and I think this is very valuable, uh, especially coming from you, a person who have been trading in the crypto space uh, for a period of time. So um, when it comes to uh, meme coins, I know you've experienced uh, a lot of volatility happening, especially with the Shiba Inu era. Uh, you've seen Dogecoin rise and fall. Um, what, what are your views on this? Uh, my views on these actually changed the moment I started speaking with some big players. They actually opened my eyes to a lot, right? Because uh, most of what we do is uh, there's a lot of volatility. And if you don't know what you're doing, you will end up gambling. What you don't want to do with the markets is gamble. What you want to do is trade. And there's just a thin line between trading and gambling. So you want to be careful not to cross that line so that you don't deviate from trading to gambling. And so uh, I, I figure that uh, most of the investments you make in crypto, if you want to really make investments in crypto, you want to go the way of like putting more money on Bitcoin, which is quite the highest stable of the cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, there's a lot of persons who have this view that feel that Bitcoin, that they're Bitcoin maximalists, uh, but I will support the Bitcoin maximalists because they have stayed in the market long enough to see that most of whatever has been there as the top cryptocurrency currently, most of them were not there previously. In the previous cycles, there were other currencies, other tokens and pairs that were the top 50, but right now some of them has gone into extinction. So that brings us to understand that most of all these other ones are basically gambling. So when you're gambling, you don't want to put much more of your portfolio into your gamble, right? You want to go like a uh, 10% risk on those ones that you're not so sure of, but Bitcoin has always, always maintained the number one position. So that's where you should focus more of your investment. And I get to hear a lot of persons saying, I don't have all the money. Bitcoin is so costly. What can I do? You can actually do a lot with your $500, your $1,000, just keep dollar cost averaging in into Bitcoin. And uh, I've looked at the Bitcoin chart in years and Bitcoin always brings, uh, pays out at least a 10 to 15 percent, a 10 to 15 X. So even if it was a hundred dollars you put in, in the next uh, bull cycle, you're sure of something like $1,000, you know, it's something $1,000 to $1,500. So that is an investment. You know, it takes time for you to get to that point. So you want to invest more on Bitcoin and put less risk on the other pairs. So $1,000 can get you to a $10,000 to a $15,000 in the next cycle. And a $10,000 can get you to a hundred K dollars. So you just have to put your mind on the investment aspect of it. Trade daily if you've got the skills for that, but think long-term. Long-term is the real deal. I said that when I started speaking. Thank you, brother. Uh, awesome, awesome. Thank you, I appreciate uh, these. Uh, good, good insights uh, out of your experience in the markets. We appreciate this. So uh, one last question. Um, uh, for a beginner, if you're looking to start trading and uh, you want to participate in a couple of cryptocurrencies, um, this is uh, 
the coin market cap website ranking the coins from the top number one uh, through I don't know what, what was the end of this. Um, how how far should a beginner go down the line? A beginner uh, stick to the number one currency. Uh, should they go to two three? Uh, should they trade a coin ranked 300, 500, and so on? Okay, simplicity is key, right? If yes. you if you if you cluster yourself with a lot, even myself at this point, I don't trade everything. I think what every beginner should do is uh, uh okay, let me give an illustration. You are growing up, you go to the college, you want to learn to become something, right? At your yes. first year, at your first year in college, uh based on the Nigerian education system. So you get exposed to a lot of courses on your year one. You basically do general courses. You do everything in the university. So I think that's exactly what it's like when you're starting out with crypto. You want to have a taste of everything. My very first year, I wanted to have a taste of everything. I want to be in every crypto. I want to be in every shit coin. But as the years went by, I started to find my footing. I started to find my focus. So that's how it works also in university from year two, they start narrowing down what you're exposed to, to your particular niche of what you're studying. By the way, I did project management. So by the time I got to my final year, we were only talking about projects and stuff, right? So that's how yes. it is also for you as a beginner. You're exposed to a lot. If you want to pick all the moves that happen with everything you're seeing in the market, you'll be confused and you're going to miss out on the prime moves that happen on certain pairs, right? Uh, last month, September, okay, this month, September, I started tracking uh, Luna from uh, Luna and Lunacy on August. On the 1st of August, I gave uh, a trade for Luna and Lunacy because I kept my watch list very simple. I don't, I don't have more than... Uh, so the key is to be simple, right? So I don't, I don't make it uh, confusing. Be yes. simple, create a watch list, okay? Don't put on your watch list more than uh, yes. 20 point, uh, pairs that you're looking at, right? Just try to master these pairs. Try to master their movement. The first of which you should have is Bitcoin. And uh, you should have Ethereum, you know, like the first 10, okay? Have like the first 10 on your pair, on your watch list. You're watching what they do. Bitcoin and Ethereum most expect, uh, uh, especially, right? And then you can actually add other ones. Maybe you hear Lunacy is good, it, it trails you, you put it on your watch list, but don't get your watch list messed up. Just keep it simple so that your eye can actually capture whatever the numbers that appears on each of these pairs are the moment you open your trading view. And then you can actually go in and just do your analysis and know what you're expecting from them. I think that's the way to go. You know, simplicity is key always. Uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the responses. Um, we have a lot of questions. So let me try and uh, cover some of these questions. Uh, the very first question is, uh, can I do Bitcoin on FX, FX Pesa platform? Yes, absolutely. So all you have to do is to go to your MetaTrader 5 trading application on uh, with uh, FX Pesa. So this is uh, MT5 uh, from the list of assets on the market odds section. Make sure that you right, right click and then select show all. So this way you'll see a list of all assets available for trading in your account. So as you scroll further down, you'll notice a new list here of cryptocurrencies. So they are uh, arranged according to alphabetic order. So from our Going down to Alchemix, uh, we have ApeCoin, uh, we have Atom, we have Ori, we have Avax, Avalanche, uh, we have Avax Infinity, and so on. So all these are cryptocurrencies paired against the dollar. So if the cryptocurrency in itself is gaining in the, uh, in the market against the dollar, then what we are seeing here is a CFD product. It's a contract for defense. So it's a derivatives product. You're not trading the actual cryptocurrency. You're only speculating on the exchange rate of that currency. So the price mirrors 100 by 100, the price of that particular cryptocurrency. So what uh, the difference is, is that when you trade here, you know, your goal is not to deposit or withdraw that cryptocurrency. You're trading against your own balance. So if your balance is in US dollars, then you'll be able to buy the cryptocurrency in dollars, sell in dollars. 
So the beauty about this platform is that you're able to trade the same way you trade forex. So if a cryptocurrency is going down, then you're able to enjoy uh, as you can go short uh, directly the same way you do in forex. So let's do an example. This is the price of Bitcoin. And as you can see, uh, in the last couple of minutes, Bitcoin has been going down. So I'm trying to collapse this section here. Yes. So clearly, uh, we can all see that the price of Bitcoin started here at the beginning of the day, went down and then up, and this is the current price. So if you want to speculate on the price going further down, you can go to the new order section, the same way you do in Forex, uh, set the minimum amount that you want to trade. Uh, remember, if you trade 0 0.01 Bitcoin, it's uh, this price multiplied by 0 0.01. And remember, this is available with leverage. You're trading with a 10 to 1 leverage. So here, if you decide to trade the minimum, which is 0 0.01, and then you go for a short trade, then you can see the green dotted line marking your entry. Click, hold, and drag to set your stop loss uh, in terms of dollars. So let's say I decide to risk $8 in this trade. So I set my stop loss there, and let's say I set my take profit. I click, hold, and drag to the lower side. So let's say I target a similar amount, $8 on this side. So a very simple trade, just like, just like in Forex. So in this case, uh, you're basically telling the broker that if the price of Bitcoin rises up to this point, then I'm not willing to take any further loss from that trade or close the trade with negative $8 and get me out of that market. But then if you're right and the market goes down and keeps going down, then in this case, uh, you're telling the broker that if the price gets to this point, close the trade and add the $8 to my trading balance. So this is done instantly. Uh, it's on the server side. So you don't have to be there. You just have to uh, observe and manage your trade. So regardless of whether you are watching, you're online, or you, even if you're offline, once the price gets to this point, the trade will close and the amount will be added to your balance. And uh, that's not a limit. If at any given point you want to close your trade, you can simply go to this section, click the X button, and the trade will close immediately. So for instance, in that particular trade, you can see I just made 0 0.09 of a dollar, a very small amount, just, uh, but just is, uh, an illustration of how easy it is to trade these cryptocurrencies. So for instance, let's get another one. Let's look at Ethereum. So you just go to ETH as the symbol for Ethereum, go to the chart window. I'm going to add my template here. Uh, Ethereum is clearly going down, uh, similar direction with Bitcoin. I go to new order. I want to trade a small amount. So let's say I trade the minimum 0 0.01 go for a sell trade. Uh, trade is executed immediately. So uh, unlike in uh, the actual trading uh, where you, let's say, decide to buy Ethereum or sell Ethereum in the market, it uh, takes a couple of minutes before your transaction is verified. But if you're trading on the derivatives market, the transactions are instant. So that's one of the advantages you get with these. Transactions are very fast and they are settled immediately. Main reason you're not trading uh, Ethereum on chain, you're trading a derivatives contract whose value is being derived from the underlying value of Ethereum. So in this case, set your stop loss. Let's say you set a take profit here. So if market goes to the upper side and gets to this point, then you make a loss and close the trade with a small negative. Uh, in this case, it's a negative 0 0.44. So on the lower side, if you're winning, uh, price goes to this point, then you make a profit, in this case, 0 0.48. So another key thing to notice is that the current price of Ethereum is 1,273. Uh, the margin requirement for that trade is $1.27. So this means that even if you have a very small account uh, that you're trading, uh, you can easily squeeze in a small position in Ethereum and get to benefit from the increased volatility as a result of the happenings in the market. So you can always click on any cryptocurrency, go to the specification. From here, you'll see the specification of the cryptocurrency you are trading. So here you can see the number of digits, uh, the contract size, very important, uh, the stops level, uh, the spread, it's floating. Uh, the product is a CFD. So you can see right from here, the profit currency is in US dollars. And um, the beauty about cryptocurrencies is that they are tradable for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the market will close on weekends. That is uh, the Forex markets, uh, the stocks, indices, all of that. The only market that is available for you to trade on a weekend, let's say you want to squeeze in some money from the markets on a weekend, 
will be the cryptocurrencies markets. So you will be able to trade these CFDs even if it's on a weekend. And that's another key difference uh, between uh, CFD crypto and uh, the other traditional assets like uh, Forex and stocks. So hopefully uh, this will be easier for you guys to participate in. So at the same time, I see there's more questions flowing in. So I just want to click and make sure that I'm uh, responding to all of them. So my FX PESA MT5 platform does not allow me to add trading pairs like BTC, USD, TC, ETC. Uh, it should work. I think it should work. Uh, try reinstalling the app and install and then install again. You should be able to add all of these. If you are on MetaTrader 4, you will not be able to access them. So you have to be aware of that. It's only available on MT5. It's not available on MT4. Uh, hi, Joshua. Please say something about BFT, Big Five Token. Uh, this is a question from Kate. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, can you one of the participants, me? Kate, is asking if you can comment something about the Big Five Token. The Big Five Token? Yes, BFT. Okay. I think the uh, tokens you should be looking at, if I get the question properly, it's like the top five cryptocurrency, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, the, the, it's, uh, the list is one Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin. Yes. Number two is Ethereum. Yes. And uh, number three on my list is BNB. Yes. And number four is... Uh, uh, there's ADA, uh, the Solana, and there's Adana, XRP. Solana, yes. There's XRP. So, like, these are the top five on my list. Yes. So, he's mentioning Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, you know the stable coin. Uh, you know the stable coin. You go to BNB, uh, you skip Ripple, and uh, the stable coin again went to Cardano, Solana, and Polkadot, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Ah, awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's check more questions. Uh, uh, how do you make money selling the coins? Uh, this is uh, pretty simple. So let me try and respond to this. So uh, let's say this is Ethereum and uh, you are trading the CFD product. So the CFD is pretty simple. It's a contract for difference. So uh, the amount of money that you make or lose is as a result of the difference in the value between your entry and exit. So in this CFD, there's always two sides. You can either decide to be a buyer or a seller. So the market is uh, so liquid. So every time you want to buy, there's a seller. And every, want, every time you want to sell, there's a buyer. So if you decide to sell 0 0.01 contracts of uh, Ethereum USD, then there's a person on the other side of the market who has taken a buy. So when you sell at this price, uh, remember you're basically borrowing money to sell. When price goes down and then you buy at a lower price, the difference is yours. So think about it this way. Um, let's say the broker was operating down the line and uh, you just made a phone call. You just asked the broker, uh, what's, what's the price of Ethereum? Uh, the broker tells you the price of Ethereum is $1,270 by Ethereum. I tell the broker, just sell one Ethereum in the market right now and keep the money. So the broker sells uh, one coin of Ethereum at 1270. So the broker is holding cash 1270, but they have borrowed one Ethereum in order to sell in the market. Now, after a period of time, price goes down to $1,000. So you call the broker again, tell the broker, now buy back the Ethereum you had borrowed uh, at the current market price. So the broker chips in from the 1270, spends 1,000, buy one Ethereum. So you have already refunded the Ethereum you had borrowed, but you are left with 270 profits. So that's basically how you sell and benefit from a short selling trade in crypto. So you borrow some money, uh, which is provided in terms of leverage. So when you see the margin requirement here as 1.27, the rest of the amount in the position is provided by the broker as a, a 
loan to help you uh, support the position. So after you close your trade, the money is uh, returned immediately and the difference in value is yours. So if it's a losing trade, you also honor the difference in value. If it's a winning trade, then you get the difference in value. So I hope that answers your question. So which background knowledge is required for one to enter crypto world? Uh, I don't think you, you need any background knowledge. Uh, we don't, there are no schools for crypto. They are just starting. Uh, crypto is only 13 years old. Uh, started in 2009. Uh, now we're in 2022. So within 13 years, I don't think there are schools uh, that have started and uh, have full and complete structures. It's also a rapidly changing world where there is more and more innovation happening each and every day. So in that case, uh, you know very well that uh, you'd have to do a lot of uh, online research to try and understand these cryptocurrencies. So one of the ways uh, you can uh, use BAN uh, would be, let's say, uh, using a couple of websites. So let's see, uh, you can use bitcoin.org to learn about Bitcoin. So that's the, my number one resource. Uh, there's a lot of uh, education content on uh, CoinMarketCap YouTube channel. Uh, then there's uh, Amazon AWS. Amazon AWS um, has uh, some good, good content. So if you want to learn, let's say, things like what is decentralization, uh, you want to learn uh, about the Ethereum merge, then all this is available here. So just uh, share the links so that uh, you guys can have the links. So this is uh, about the Ethereum. What is Ethereum? Uh, you want to learn, uh, let's say, what is blockchain technology, then I'll be just sharing these links. Make sure that you guys can access them anytime you want. So that's it. Uh, I think I've answered that particular question. So we keep going. Uh, can you explain what is layer one and layer two blockchains? Um, layer one, the original traditional blockchains. So when you build a blockchain from the ground up, then that is uh, often classified as layer one. So most layer one blockchains will have uh, specific use cases. Uh, for instance, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer cash system. Uh, for Ethereum, it's a uh, basically described as a world computer, uh, helps build smart contracts on top of the chain uh, that are used to solve different roles. So it's still a layer one. But then if you go on Bitcoin and then on top of Bitcoin, you build another layer such as uh, the Lightning Network, then that's layer two. So if you build a layer on top of a bit, a bit or a, on top of a layer one, then you have layer two. So for instance, if you look at something like SushiSwap, SushiSwap uh, is a ecosystem that is built on top of Ethereum, so that's a layer two. So I'm thinking of investing investing in metaverse tokens like Gala, uh, AXS, ETC. What's your advice? Uh, my advice is that you take your time. Uh, we are currently in a bear market, so most of the cryptocurrencies are going down. Uh, Bitcoin has been going down since, uh, I think, late last year. Ethereum has been going down. Uh, so if you're looking on to uh, buying, you have to wait until there is a fundamental shift where the market is changing from bearish to bullish. For now, it seems like most of the projects are going downwards. So even when you're uh, looking for trading positions, my advice is that you try and look for short selling positions. So uh, do you think it's a great idea to hold on to Bitcoin till December? Uh, for Bitcoin, which is a special case, uh, it's, a, it's one cryptocurrency that has a lot of value uh, that is different from other cryptocurrencies. So for Bitcoin, you'd, ra you'd rather have a longer time frame. So when we say hold on till December, you should probably be looking at the next five or 10 years. So if you want to get real value from Bitcoin, then you should uh, zoom out, avoid the noise, and look at a longer term uh, period of time. So the next halving is happening in 24, and on a halving cycle is a period when we normally experience a Bitcoin bull run, where uh, prices tend to be going up strongly. So I would advise you stack at lower prices, and then you hold on for a longer duration of time.
So a uh, good, good question. Uh, what are the factors affecting the current bearish move in uh, cryptocurrencies? So uh, cryptocurrencies are treated as uh, risk assets, the same case or the same way we trade stocks. So during the bull run that we experienced in 2020 through to 2021, uh, there was a lot of free money floating around. Central banks lowered interest rates to record rows. That's in uh, the US, the Eurozone, uh, even in Africa, central banks lowered interest rates. And then there was a lot of stimulus packages that uh, meant that there was a lot of money, fiat money flowing around. So when people had to have more money, they tend to consume more and also they tend to invest more. So this increased investment coupled by uh, the closing of businesses during the COVID-19 period, people could not invest most of their money into physical businesses because they were not around to move around and uh, build products. So they turned to online investing and a lot of this money found itself in crypto, uh, in stocks, among other risk assets. So we saw a very strong run happening during the COVID-19 period. But then as we approached 2022, the central banks started raising interest rates and removed the stimulus packages. So this particular process is called quantitative tightening and it's doing the exact opposite. So while interest rates are going up, uh, loans are becoming more expensive, uh, it's becoming harder to have surplus amount of money to spend on other things because the inflation is uh, raising consumer prices. So if let's say you are doing a budget of 20K, a monthly budget of uh, 20K uh, an year from ago, right now you're probably doing a budget of 30K, so you're left with less money to spend. So with less money to spend, then there's less money flowing into the risk assets, there's less money flowing into stocks, there's less money flowing into, into cryptocurrencies, and this is contributing to the bearish momentum. So right now in a bear market started early in the year, I think first January this year, and uh, prices have been uh, consistently going down. So I hope that answers your question about the factors influencing the current bearish move in cryptocurrencies. So uh, this week, uh, Wednesday, that was yesterday, the US hiked interest rates by 75 basis points. Uh, early in the morning today, the Swiss franc, or the Swiss National Bank raised interest rates by 75 basis points. Uh, later on at 2 p.m., the UK Bank of England raised interest rates by 0.50%. So these are moves of quantitative tightening are making it harder for people to have some extra income to invest in these assets. And this is contributing to the bearish momentum. So while the currencies uh, attempt to strengthen, the equities and the cryptocurrencies are weakening. So those are the factors that are majorly influencing the bearish markets in uh, cryptocurrencies. So uh, there's also the question from uh, Apollo uh, about uh, fraud in cryptocurrencies. So as we've already mentioned, the most uh, secure, the most decentralized uh, cryptocurrency ecosystem is Bitcoin. And uh, with this, uh, you are most assured that you're not going uh, to be losing your money to scammers or to any kind of hacking. So in this case, uh, you might want to allocate more of your investment in it compared to other cryptocurrencies. So Ethereum is a uh, closely uh, a distant second, not closely, but a distant. So it's uh, reasonably secure compared to other cryptocurrencies. So you might want to uh, add a slightly lower than Bitcoin, but uh, slightly higher than other coins. Uh, you might want to allocate some coin in, uh, some money in that. But then when you look at all the other cryptocurrencies below that, then you might want to do some further research into the cryptocurrency you're investing in. So if it's Binance, you want to know uh, the amount of value it's uh, forming, the interest, uh, the financial position of the company and so on. Uh, you want to check out uh, things like FTX, crypto.com, and so on. So uh, the further down you go, the, the, low, the, higher, uh, the higher amount of research you're supposed to do and the higher the risk that those projects uh, will portray. So I, will, I will don't revouch for, the, for like the top two. For the others, you have to do a lot of research to identify whether they have actual value or not. And that is in the long run. If you just want to trade, then you can enjoy the volatility happening around. So let's see which one I've not answered.
So uh, what's the difference between uh, BCH and uh, Bitcoin uh, leverage? They appear on, as such on uh, MT5. So there's a coin called Bitcoin Cash and there's Bitcoin. Those are two different coins. So when you talk of Bitcoin, it's a BTC and uh, Bitcoin Cash is BCH. So you have to make a distinction between the two uh, because they represent two totally different ecosystems. So they started uh, in a similar way, but they, they don't represent uh, the same coins. So just a moment so I can show you. So the number one coin is Bitcoin and the abbreviation is BTC. So the other one is BCH. BCH is a little bit lower. I think it's, it's still top 100, but somewhere further down. The logo is in green, BCH. This is Bitcoin Cash. So it's a totally different coin, not the same as Bitcoin. So uh, there's a question, uh, what is the lesson about? Uh, it's about cryptocurrencies one-on-one. -on -one. We are trying to understand who they are and how you can trade them on the FX Pesa platform via CFDs. So if you came in late, uh, there'll be a recording on YouTube. So we'll be sharing the link later after this. So as a beginner, how do you spot a selling or a buying market? Uh, so uh, this is a good, good question. So when it comes to technical analysis, uh, you apply the same, same technical analysis you've been doing in uh, Forex. So if you are very new to these, then you should probably head straight to the FX Special channel. And then from the FX Special channel, you basically go through the novice to pro series. So it's a series that I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. And these will help you transition from a beginner to a pro level trader. So from here, you learn all the basics, the pricing, how to use the trading application. And once you have gone through the series, then it will be easier for you to transition to now uh, specializing, let's say to Forex, you can specialize in stocks, commodities, or whatever choice you make. So I've already shared the link to that series. So all you have to do is uh, go to the series. So still checking to check if there's a question I've missed. I think I've answered all the questions that have been raised. So any questions on YouTube live? So do you do fundamental analysis on crypto? Uh, we, it's not something that we have been doing. Crypto, uh, CFD crypto is our newest product. So we will be considering on offering more content in terms of analyzing crypto and looking at potential uh, moves. Um, do you know of a good escrow service for crypto, especially Bitcoin? Uh, you can try out localbitcoins.com. I think it's the oldest in the, uh, in the space right now. So I think no other questions. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you for your time, thank you for your participation. And uh, I hope to see you guys on the next session. Thanks for having me, brother. Uh, thank you, Joshua. Uh, you have really added value today. Yeah. Thank you, Millicent.